right, here he is, Craig McConnell, otherwise known as Rock and Roll, one of my favorite G.I. Joes when I was growing up, because I had, well, we'll talk about the versions in a minute, but obviously this is the newest G.I. Joe classified figure, and I wanted to open him up now, while I'm still getting caught up on unboxings, because he's, he's the newest figure in the series to come out. So we're obviously still on windowless packaging here, but honestly, I like the G.I. Joe Windows packaging because, you know, I've said it before, I like the art. I like the art style on all the boxes, all the different art styles and stuff. And these boxes show it off just a little bit more. This one, not so much. It's only this little sliver over here, so you do have, obviously, you know, the render of the figure. All the accessories on, go on the front now instead of just on the back. And we'll talk about it more when the figure's out, but this figure is based on his... It's sort of, it's, it looks like a combination of maybe his version one and two figures. So the version one figure that it's loosely based on is from 1982. It was actually in series one. And it was kind of just a plain, a plain, there, there was not a lot of distinguishing characteristics to that version. Me, I don't have it anymore, but me when I was younger, I had the version two from 1989. And man, oh man, I loved that figure. It had the two those big old two mini guns on the side. And that version is the one I'm mostly familiar with from the comic book, way more than the original version, which was in uh, the cartoon a little bit. He wasn't a super main character, predominant in the cartoon. He, he was pretty generic in it, to be quite honest. But he was super prominent in the comic book, especially that second version with the, with the tan shirt and the, you know the two mini guns. So this definitely shares a lot more design notes with the first version figure, but it does have some of a little bit of the second version in there too with the, you know, color of the shirt and everything. But we'll see that more when we get them out of the package. First side is just a little, you know, QR code and then it's got little tiny icons down there, little tiny. I can't even see those. I need glasses or something. On the other side, same art as on the front, 71 in the series. So yes, they're they're really cranking them out. They're up to 71 now. Back we got more information, another more renders, more accessories, which are on the front now too. And then it's got these weird, like just different views of it, I guess. I don't know. And there's slightly bigger icons here. I don't know where the QR code goes. I'll look at the QR code in a minute. That's new to me. So we'll check it out and see if there's more to the icons there. But anyways, it's Vanguard, heavy weapons, strength, and artillery, which is obviously what he's known for. His original figure said, I think it said like heavy machine gunner rock and roll or something like that on it so he's always been the heavy weapons expert and he originally came with a big machine gun like this which we'll see although i'm i'm telling you i'm quite attached to that version 2 figure with the two mini guns that was so amazing when i was a kid that was like balling it was like it reminded me of the minigun from predator i was a huge predator fan when i when i was a kid and taking that into consideration he was easily one of my favorite gi joes to play with when i was a kid all right let's turn the dial to 11 and open up rock and roll Right, rock and roll is free from his prison and I must say initial impressions is I'm pretty impressed um, I've gone over the body to see what reuse there is and I honestly I don't see a lot of it obviously the chest is probably reused because it's just a generic chest and a lot of the other G.I. Joe's have a vest over the chest so this could be you know just a generic you know plain Jane vest because it is pretty plain there's not much going on here it's just completely smooth it does have that line up top the two tone paint job but it's definitely pretty plain there's nothing going on up here other than this the, you know the, the crisscross ammo here which you know is a homage to his first figure his first figure had this his second figure had something crisscrossed on the chest but it, it wasn't really ammo it was like you know pouches like i mean i suppose it could have been some type of ammo this is definitely like a, a combination a little bit it's more the first version figure but a little bit of the second version too if you ask me but it's definitely cool i definitely dig the color scheme um and you know going to the reuse part like i don't see these knee pads on anyone else and i don't have the whole series like i said so it might not be an all-new sculpt it might be a figure that i just don't have but i don't see these knee pads or these boots on anybody maybe these these parts of the pants are reuse or something like that but it looks pretty pretty close to a unique sculpt here and i'm pretty impressed with that that nothing really stands out to me to be like hey I know, I know where that's from. I know where that's from. It's pretty disguised here. 
And I definitely think the biggest feature of this is the head. Like, I really like the head sculpt. The last couple head sculpts I looked at were Cover Girl, which was good. <laughs> but then it was Falcon, which was which was the worst thing ever. He looked like a Muppet, like a, a Muppet of Mr. Bean or something. And this brings it back to the face sculpts that I like, that I'm impressed with from the series. This face sculpt is really good, and especially the sculpt on the hair. And it's got that dark, dark wash on it to give it a little texture to give it a little you know contrast it looks so good and this is one of the first people we've had with you know facial hair like that and definitely if you think rock and roll if you know the classic rock and roll and you look at this you can pretty much put one in one together equals four right and be like oh yeah that's definitely rock and roll i recognize the ammo the you know the blondish hair so let's go over some of the cool design notes. We're not going to go over all the articulation. I've done that in Nauseam. All the G.I. Joe articulation is relatively the same. He does have the butterfly joints there. But you know, all the articulation for the whole G.I. Joe classified series is, is basically the same. So I've gone over it a hundred times. So I don't really want to go over it again for the hundred and first time. But a few of the cool design notes here. Obviously, I already talked about this ammo thing going around. The top shirt is a little bit plain, but I do like the two tone or the color and it does have a sculpted line going across it's not just a paint job there's a sculpted line across he's got these very 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 short sleeves here that's why i think this is a unique sculpt too because i haven't seen anyone else with sleeves this short most of the sleeves go down to here and these sleeves are short because there's a new feature on this rock and roll tattoos the original figures did not have tattoos but i guess they felt like they wanted to modernize rock and roll and make him metal roll or, like I said earlier, dial them up to 11. So this is rock and roll to the extreme. So obviously these tattoos are just, you know, a, a paint application of some sort. And they do look really good, especially this one here. Mom. Oh, it's so sweet. So obviously going down the arms, he's got the tattoos. He's got a wristband over here on this side. He's got a cool little more ammo around his wrist, which is a cool little touch. It's probably obviously just for looks. I don't think he's putting this in a gun or anything. But it's, you know, a nice gun, gun bullet bracelet. Maybe his his kids made him this in, in G.I. Joe art class. His belt at the waist does keep popping up a little bit. So you have to keep putting it down. And it's actually semi, it's not symmetrical, right? So it's hard to tell what's supposed to be in the middle. Maybe that's supposed to be in the middle. I don't know. It does have a little hole here. I believe that's for uh, a walkie-talkie or something on his accessories, which we'll see in a minute, obviously. But going around to the back, it's got another hole in the back for another accessory, canteen. So it's a good sculpt on the belt, and it's a unique sculpt again. I don't think, I haven't seen anyone else with two sort of holes on the belt like that. So, I don't know, could be a unique sculpt. Going down to the legs, he has another holster here, another holster here. It's, you know, the same old articulation that I say, I'm not going to go over. One cool bonus about him is he doesn't have shin guards, like those crooked shin guards we keep getting. So... You know, he's, he does have a, a, a small one, I guess, but it's definitely straight and it's not like a big old extra piece that they put on crooked like Alley Viper. If you haven't seen the Alley Viper video, go watch that. And I definitely like the green of the pants for sure. The green and the brown go together really well. And the color, just the overall color scheme, definitely fits the rock and roll aesthetic from the original figure. I definitely, definitely, definitely like it. All right, let's start taking a look at his accessories and then get them all suited up. All right, first things first is the hands. He does have a punching hand, and this is the hand that's that's featured on the box and, you know, in all the pictures that people are putting online. People really like this hand. That's the, you know, rock and roll, devil horn. So he's got him. He's got him. He can poke you in the eye, too, with them, I'm pretty sure. Comes with a pretty cool helmet here, too. A lot of good sculpting details and paint details. The hang ten on the side. It does have some brown accents on it going around. It's got a little pouch on the back. So the sculpt work and all the details on the helmet are really good. And this is definitely more indicative of his first version figure too. Because his second version figure just had like a, a ball cap. So it was like a, a military sort of ball cap. And getting it on his head, it looks pretty good. It fits on there nice and snug. It won't fall off or anything. And he looks, he looks pretty cool with that on. It almost looks like a flight helmet. You know, like a, a helicopter flight helmet or something. But obviously he needs these earmuffs because he's firing firing big old guns, big old machine guns all the time. He needs to save his hearing, you know, to hear more Black Sabbath songs on the radio. A little walkie-talkie radio here. And again, for such a small piece, I like how they're doing 
I mentioned it in the last video, I, I noticed a lot of the accessories are now not single color anymore. You get multiple colors. So this does have a nice, you know, brown accent at the bottom in a, in a black screen in the middle. So it actually has two accents on here. And it does have a little peg hole on the back. So that does hook into his belt, obviously, like we talked about. We all know every good G.I. Joe needs a handgun. Everyone has one so far, or most of them. So there's another one right here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a unique sculpt. I've lost track of the handguns at this point, but obviously he has one. And it goes in the holster on his legs. So good sculpt work there, no accents, but it is just a handgun. I can't get it in! Ah! All right, right in the holster right there. His, his walkie-talkie fell off his belt. Let's get it back there. So there's two holes in his belt. The only problem is once you put this in, you see the antenna bending back. I don't really like that. But if this is where it's supposed to go, this is where it's supposed to go. So maybe on there like that. And then once you get it in there, it doesn't hit this anymore. But it will in some poses, I'm sure. And it bend, will bend that antenna back. All right, it's got this little ammo box right here. And this hooks to the gun, I'm pretty sure. And then this, this part's supposed to go in like this. So this feeds through the gun a little bit and gives it sort of the, the visual of, you know, the bullets going through uh, the, the gun chamber. And there is a big, long, flexible, bendy bandolier of bullets. And this is the little one that goes in the little box that I just showed, the little ammo box. And I guess these are just two different ones to give you different effects however you want for your display. Like a short one, like he's not shooting, or a long one, you know, to be like hanging on the ground or something i don't know but it looks it looks really cool it's bendable it's painted right the details are very nice it's it's it looks really good all the individual bullets and everything and that brings us to his most used accessory his most used item his favorite thing in his world other than a guitar the giant machine gun so this is obviously a homage to his first figure his first figure had that big single giant machine gun the second figure was the one with the two like mini guns so this is obviously from the first figure right here. And it does have this kind of cool piece right here that folds out into, you know, like a stand to shoot people. The original figure actually came with, I think that was a separate piece that you had to hook on and it was either on or off. This one actually retracts, which is a really cool touch. So when it's down, it stands up. And actually when you put it back, it like goes in a little bit. So it's not just, you know, hanging out the side and looking goofy or anything. It just goes right like that and that looks really cool these two holes here are where the ammo box goes so the ammo box can hook uh, let's see right there just like that so now the ammo box you can have the ammo come out of it and feed through the gun and that's your that's your display piece right there it does have a peg on here so i wonder if this also goes on his belt if you want it to too you can maybe put it on his belt too so the ammo box is a little odd, right? Because you're not going to put this in it here because this just looks kind of ridiculous. So this is more of, the long one's more of when you put this on his belt and then this will feed into his belt because the bullets have to go this way. So it would almost look good if the bullets were like the other way, if it makes sense, like this small one. Obviously this one is, you know, the wrong way. Does that make sense? So this one, if you put it in like that, the bullets are facing the wrong way. Does that make sense? So I don't know. It's, there's some weird design choices here, right? It's, it's not super confusing or anything. It's just kind of odd, I guess, what they expect you to do. Because if you put these bullets inside, you know, they're not going into the gun. <laughs> but if you put them inside the other way to go actually into the gun, so it looks like it's running them out of the ammo pouch, like into the gun, the bullets are facing the wrong way. So it doesn't make much sense, but you know, I don't know. I didn't design the thing, okay? All right, so we got the big old hunk of machine gun in his hand. We got the, you know, the ammo there with the with the long strip and you can, you know, weave it around into the gun. Um, the walkie talkie keeps falling out on the back. So it's not much I can do about that. It's not the greatest design choice in the world, but that's sort of the idea with the ammo or the, you know, he can hold the ammo too or something like that. You know what I mean? But you know, he's looking pretty, pretty ammoed up. Pretty, you know, badass right there. Pretty rock and roll. And there he goes with the signature. Throw the horns in the air. And I definitely must say this, this figure does scream rock and roll to me. 
So I think they did a great job on this one. Like I, I really like the accessories, especially the sculpt work is really good. The sculpt work on the head, the helmet looks really good. The color scheme of everything really matches well. I think I really like the tattoos on the arm too. The only problem I'm having is the walkie talkie staying in or it's just kind of awkward. So I probably won't even leave it on him. I don't, I don't think, but that's the only sort of awkward thing about it. It's mostly a new sculpt. But there's really not much to complain about here. So let's go into the photo montage and in final thoughts. All right, and that's the new Jejo Classified Rock and Roll. I hope I covered enough of the figures to make you decide if you want to buy it or not, but I definitely dig it. It's almost a whole new scope. I love the tattoos, I love the attitude, it screams rock and roll to me, he's Metallica and Black Sabbath all in one, and he's a super cool addition to the line. And I hope the rest of the figures in this wave, Copperhead and, and Shipwreck and all them, are just as good. I'm super excited to get them all. So again, this is another interruption to the mass unboxings. Those will kill, still continue, I still have three more of those to film, along with a lot of other stuff that's still on the agenda. Some more Turtle stuff, some Spawn stuff, some NECA horror stuff too. Everything's still coming. So thanks for watching and supporting. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, peace out. Yo, Joe.